Hey guys, Dito Boy Police here, and this video's goal is to discover whether Anna is a 2K MMR boosted player or not. As most of you know, two of the greatest websites in the internet throughout great investigative journalism discovered that Anna tends to die a lot in the laning phase, which strongly suggests and correlates to him being a terrible player. Being a very skeptic person, I decided to investigate by myself whether this is true or not. So one of the games that made this discussion relevant again was OG vs Secret Game one. He was playing Storm Spirit and fed 5 times in only 10 minutes of the game. Well, that doesn't seem so good. But before we sharp our pitchforks, one thing to do is looking at the draft. Maybe that can give us more perspective on what happened during that game. Look, before I start this video, I just want to point out that my main goal here is not to prove a point, even though it can be hard to remain neutral when a good portion of the arguments against Anna are based in opinion alone. My main goal here is to give you a broader view on this game in particular and show that even when we watch a game, there are tons of perspectives that can get lost during the broadcast. The first important part of the draft is knowing full well that Storm was picked after OG knew they would be facing Ogre and Bounty Hunter, two extremely strong early game roamers that can punish Storm's weakest point in the game the early game, specifically before he has the ult to disengage. There are tons of different picks that would allow Anna to have a smoother and better laning phase. Cop, Murana and Windranger, for instance, are three heroes that OG picked in the last three months. The three heroes have different disengaging abilities that would make the early pressure harder for Secret to apply. They could pressure OG, but getting kills would be way harder. Yet, they didn't go for any of those heroes. Why, you might ask? A Storm is great at closing the gap against Bounty Hunter, one very annoying hero to deal with in the mid game, because as long as track is up, most of the trades will favor the enemy team network wise. It's also a great way of dealing with Sniper. When Sniper has to play against Storm, most of the time he won't have the ability to go full grid and DPS, because Storm can and will take him out of the fight as much as possible. This usually forces an early BKB, and when OG goes for their mid game push with Lone Druid, the high ground aspect of Sniper's defense won't be as strong since he has BKB instead of another item. So there are good aspects of Storm in this game, but most of the time a team prefers to give his mid player a good matchup rather than the best fit for the game. Well, let's keep going. Now that we understand that Anna is in that game fully aware of how difficult it's going to be. Most of the time when a team knows that a hero is going to have a terrible lane phase, especially when that hero is the mid player, there will be some form of help available to him. A hero hidden in the tower to counter initiate, TPs when the enemy dives you, yet in this particular gank that Secret goes for, with 3 heroes mind you, nothing was made to help Anna. Even against 3 heroes diving him, Anna manages to take an ogre down by playing as aggressive as possible since he was clearly dead regardless of what he did. In my opinion, of all the 5 deaths Anna has in the first 10 minutes of the game, this is the less justified one. If people want to flame him, this is probably the one example they're going to use. So Anna knew ogre was there, he goes to the low ground regardless, and how can Storm Spirit deal against Ignite, level 2 shrapnel and and two bloodlusted heroes when he isn't even close to his boots. But watch this clip again, Anna had Jarex right on his side. If you wanted to make a case on Jarex being a terrible player, you could say that he took a lot of time to react to the aggression coming from Secret. But how many times did you see someone criticizing Jarex Earth Spirit? We can't know for sure whether this was miscommunication or not, but people really focus on stats instead of watching what was going on during every death. Maybe Anna thought that Jarex was looking at him. But yes, I do agree he was a little bit out of position during this clip. We see another death at the 6 minute mark, not only Anna is unlucky lucky because he needs literally one creep to get level 6 before Sniper goes in, Sniper actually finds a haste rune right as the lingering vision from Storm is ending. So it's not like Anna was out of position or a secret had wards there, the fact Sniper has ult before Storm because he sent Anna to the jungle combined with bloodlust and luck gets mid one another kill. I mean, after two kills you would expect OG to set up some sort of safety net on Storm, right? But in the last kill, CN was even farming jungle.
and in this queue, CM has no TP to go there. So what's going on here? OG is a terrible team, Fly and Anna hate each other. I guess it's pretty clear that OG sacked Anna's laning phase completely. This is something OG used to do a lot with no tail in the last iteration of OG, and guess who was flamed over and over again, even though his team was able to get tournaments and majors reliably. Let's keep focusing the facts though. You might be wondering, well, if Storm had a belt of strength instead of these shitty soul ring components, maybe he would have survived. I doubt it. Sniper had haste room. But the items Anna went for reveal a little bit of what I suppose OG's plan was. With the safe lane and off lane succeeding, because Earth Spirit was roaming in those areas and CM getting a lot of early levels jungling, in fact, Fly was jungling the camps close to Anna for some time, the only place Storm could rotate to get easy farm and still be back to the lane when the lane pushed. But we don't see anyone flaming Fly because, in fact, this was their strategy all the time. So what's this strategy? What OG wants to do is start creating space with those heroes that succeeded so that Storm can get the items he needs to be relevant in the mid to late game, which is when he is expected to succeed anyways. So with Soul Ring, Mana Region from CM and level 10 talent and the jungle all for himself, he can start farming his way back into the game. And now he doesn't need to feel afraid of diving since with the pressure coming from OG, Secret needs to address those heroes. But we still have two deaths to see, so keep watching. The fourth death was this one. Pretty much everyone criticized Anna here. Why the hell is he diving so deep? Such a bad storm spirit, terrible mana management, right? But if you watch this clip, Anna wasn't even in the lane to go to Sniper. In fact, the only reason he ends up needing to jump so deep is that Jarex missed the row going in, which means CM couldn't hold him in place a little bit before, because if he did, Anna didn't have to commit a second jump to cast Remnant to do damage to Sniper. In fact, it was pretty clear that maybe Sniper would go forward since that creep was about to die, because he had to commit another jump, he is the first hero in contact with Ogre and dies to Shrapnel and Ignite. But we don't see anyone flaming Jarex that he missed that skill. The final death happens because Secret Smoke Ganks, they tried to get a good angle to stun Storm through that path of trees, but they weren't able to do so. I feel like Anna misplayed a little bit in this case, he had the chance to dodge Assassinate with Ball Lining after Ogre stun, but couldn't manage to do it. I feel like he was dead either way because Bounty Hunter is there and he has vision, with Jinada Slow and Arbor Venom there is not much he could do since he didn't have a lot of mana. So I mean, yeah, this was probably a mistake, but not game changing and he definitely didn't die because he was badly positioned. In fact, the only reason Secret had to commit so much is that they didn't have an angle of initiation because of where he was. It gets clear to me that the posture about Anna changes after the 12 minute mark. With max levels of aura, Anna having the mana region talent and soul ring makes him able to farm really really fast in the jungle. So OG's plan here is making use of the great laning phase that Noteo had to create space and fight. They get a kill on Bounty Hunter and look at what Noteo does here. They had vision of Ogre Farm in that location, and even knowing that, he dives Sniper ultra hard and he dies, but I didn't saw anyone flaming Noteo for that. I didn't saw anyone mentioning this fight at all. In fact, the fight that happens afterwards is still bad, and OG decided to take it even with Bounty Hunter alive and they having three heroes. Storm is not there, he clearly can't fight, and this is OG creating space for Anna, even though they weren't in the best fighting shape or in the best location to fight. They know they only have three heroes there, Bounty Hunter is back, they have no vision advantage, and they took that fight. Even if no major cooldowns were committed, they know that Bounty Hunter TP'd there and Anna can keep doing his thing and farm Bloodstone. After that point, Anna died once and got 12 more kills, which shows that pretty much every death was a result of the hero itself, which shows that pretty much every death Anna had was a result of OG's plan, the weaknesses that Storm Spirit has in the early game. Storm is terrible in the early game, especially against roamers, and when it mattered, not only Anna was able to farm his way back into the game, but he fought a lot and was able to die only once, finishing the game with 34 bloodstone charges. Well, that's it guys, I feel like Anna is not the best mid player in the world, this is not what I'm trying to say, but I feel like he gets way more criticism than he deserves, and in this game I feel like it would be very hard for him not to die in the early game, and maybe if OG committed so much resources in making him have a great laning phase, in fact the other lanes could have suffered and they wouldn't win. So, well, this is how OG plays apparently, and it's been working. Well, this wraps up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please guys give it a thumbs up. If you want to see the extended version of this video, please check the link in the description. Pugna is a platform where you can learn from people like Fogged, 
Chessy, Monib, and get better at the game. They have now great content on 702, and if you want to raise your MMR, this is a great time. Just figure out the patch faster than others and get those easy wins. He's able to land the first Arb of Venom right click that again forces shield followed by Earthshock. A better offlane Abaddon wouldn't play that dumb though. The right play here would actually hit Ursa once with the passive since he's level 2, giving him more move speed and slowing fear a little bit. That will make it harder for fear to get both kills. Maybe not impossible, but harder. Also, Abaddon should actually go to the lane with shield already on, but only after waiting a little bit to have another cooldown of shield when fear goes on him. This way he could deal more